And guys, come, they can, they can listen from wherever I am at that moment. How many of you have developed any kind of games before? Or have interest in building games? Whether for your company or you know, on your own to earn some extra money. And yeah, so the topic of today is iOS game development. Um, I'll touch upon a lot of uh, techniques that you can use uh, to build uh, games in iOS platform. But before that, let's see some numbers. So these are the revenues uh, or income by companies uh, in 2014 and 13 in games, like over 25 billion. Um, in, you know, pe people made just building games, just by selling games. Um, this is both for iOS and Android. Uh, but <coughs> this is, these are some numbers of games uh, and the daily revenues by these games in US dollar. So this much money these games make per day from users, you know. Uh, Candy Crush is obviously in the list. Uh, if you have seen a lot of Facebook spams, you know, you know how people earn money. So before, uh, now there is a uh, library uh, or framework uh, that's provided by Apple to build games, which is known as Sprite Kit. And Sprite Kit is very easy to build um, iOS games. But 70% of games in the App Store, they are 2D games. You know, um, there are few high-end 3D games like Infinity Blade and all. But um, games that you probably use on a day-to-day -day basis, like you know, Angry Birds, uh, Cut the Rope, uh, Where's My Water, Flappy Bird, all these are 2D games. Um, and more than half of the game developers are indie developers. They don't work for any companies. Uh, a developer, of, you know, it's a, sometimes it's a team of one or two guys who just uh, joined in meetups like this and probably thought about building some games. And they make some pretty cool stuff. Like for example, Flappy Bird is done by a single guy and he has uh, built both for iOS and Android and uh, he has some you know, similar games uh, in both the platforms. Um, and each of these games, they have very common needs. They obviously need uh, beautiful graphics, um, need to find a good designer. Or if you don't know any designer, there are ways you can um, get you know game assets from different sites. Or you can simply build games using just text. I'll also show you later how. And you need obviously some kind of visual effects, some kind of particles in, in your game. And you need physics and animation depending on the game. For example, uh, Angry Birds is a physics based, based game. Uh, it's being built uh, using Box 2D. Uh, so in 2013, before uh, Sprite Kit, there are other libraries like Cocos 2D. Um, and, uh, similar libraries that people use to build games uh, for iOS. In Cocoa Studio, you can build both for both iOS and Android. Um, however, uh, a lot of time, sometimes people roll out things on their own using just core animation if the game is very simple. Um, but then Apple thought, you know, why don't we provide a framework to these guys to make their life easier and so that they just focus on thinking about game logic and thinking about really um, good games then uh, trying to build game engines. And then came Sprite Kit. And Sprite Kit uh, lets you do a few things. It allows you to quickly create uh, sprites, different particles. It lets you use uh, a lot of physics objects lets you create physics based uh, games allows you to animate these objects 
apply actions on these objects, really literally with single line of course, we'll see those uh, later on. And you can, um, in some games, you can uh, have like the requirements of videos, almost in all games you need some kind of audios uh, when things happen. And you need obviously visual app uh, effects. All these are part of Sprite Kit. Uh, I'll show you a demo. Uh, basically, my talk has like several demos that also. One of them is uh, this uh, sample that comes with uh, this that's being provided by Apple. It's called Adventure. Uh, So I'll build it for iPad. And this is a simple uh, adventure game where there are archer and warrior. Um, I select the archer and there's this archer. I can use my mouse or keyboard to move this guy and I can uh, fire arrows to these goblins. And if you see some kind of effects there, the leaves are falling and if you come underneath the tree, the trees kind of fade away. Um, and a little bit of parallax effect uh, that allows you to, you know, uh, visualize this depth in this game. And as you move in, you see more goblins. There are fires, and there are different objects. So this is a simple game that you can download from Apple to kind of uh, uh, see what are the things that you can do using Sprite Kit. There are literally three uh, main parts. Uh, of building a game using Sprite Kit. Uh, one is scene, another one is action, and third one is physics. And we'll, we'll look into uh, all of this uh, as we go. So scenes are basically uh, where, uh, imagine scenes as a particular scene of the game that you're visualizing. You can, uh, in a way, imagine this is a canvas where you will draw objects, whether um, it's your player, whether it's your enemies, or whether it's a background uh, image. Uh, you basically draw things like nodes on these scenes, uh, and um, uh, nodes represent, uh, again, the, in the adventure game, uh, we saw the archer, uh, that archer is a node. The trees, those are uh, individual nodes, and the background image, and all those things are nodes, uh, different nodes. And sometimes you want to apply different physics um, to these nodes, and you want to have some kind of action with these nodes. So finally, you need, need a way to add these things to your game. Basically, there's this class called SK View. SK stands for Sprite Kit and Sprite Kit View, where you add your scene. And, um, yeah, basically that's it. Uh, in your scenes, you draw nodes and you add your scenes to the escape view. Let's take a look into the game loop. What happens uh, when you when the game is running? For every frame, for each frame, there's this method called update that gets called. And in update, basically uh, you update the frame, or you basically uh, in update, you can spawn enemies, or you can spawn different players, or obstacles and objects. These are things you can uh, do inside the update uh, method. And uh, it evaluates any actions that's pending on a particular node or nodes. If there are several nodes and you want to do several actions, for each frame, it evaluates these actions. And it uh, checks after evaluating if you need to remove some of these nodes, or if you need to you know, do some kind of animation after these actions uh, are finished, then there is this method did evalu evaluate actions that gets called. And you simulate physics, it checks that the uh, physics is finished, and if you need to do anything after the physics simulation is finished. And that keeps on rendering for each frame. 
and ideally uh, for games they run between 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second so for each frame these method methods get called giving you opportunity to run different uh, pieces of your course and uh, let's uh, see a demo uh, I was reading a book and that book I'll uh, give you the name of the book later that book has uh, walks you through to build five different games one of the game is this one uh, zombie conga I'll just build it Basically, this zombie moves, and you need to yeah. when you catch a cat, the cat is zombified, and the cat follows you. Yeah. But if you hit the cat lady, you lose life, and uh, I think two or three life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's the game. So as I talked about, uh, there are different nodes that allows you to do different things um, in your game. And the base class is SK node, which is which stands for Sprite Kit node. And you have different properties uh, using which you can change the alpha value of the node, you can uh, rotate the node, uh, you can scale the node, or you can show or hide the nodes. But ideally, you won't be using SK node directly. What you'll be using is something called SK Sprite node. 80% uh, or 70% of your code will be just creating, will involve just uh, to create SK Sprite node and manage these nodes. Um, it has an explicit size. It can um, display color or it can display texture. If you specify a size, then it draws the node of that particular size. If you specify a color, it draws a SK Sprite node for that color. Same with texture. So if you create a new um, let me change it. You create a new project. There is this template called game. You can simply select this template. And it asks you, okay, which game technology you need to use. Sprite Kit is one of them. You have Scene Kit, which is being used for uh, 3D games. Or you have OpenGLS and the new thing, Metal. So you can select one of these templates. And you can obviously choose Swift or Objective-C. Let me just call it, uh, I'm just going to create it for iPhone. And it gives you some, um, uh, you know, some sample classes to start with. I'll just run it to see what happens. Uh, this is just game template where you click, and uh, these spaceships come and they just rotate. Um, so going back to our code, I'll see how how to create which. Uh, nodes and how to rotate them uh, with texture you have some uh, helper methods one of the important one is uh, texture with image where you can specify the image name uh, to directly create a texture uh, with that particular image name and in order to create a sprite node as a sprite node you need to first create a sprite node then you need to create a texture then you need to set the size of the sprite and you need to set the texture uh, for that sprite but this is so common that you also have a convenience method a sprite node with image named and you just give the name of the image and it will create a sprite node for you and uh, you basically add that node to your scene in order to make it appear on your scene as we saw that we can create uh, sprite nodes with colors and with textures you can kind of combine them together also to give different uh, effects. Uh, for example, here in this case, there's a mountain. I can put blue color to give a icy feeling of 
uh, icy filling to this mountain for my ice wall for example uh, let's say if you have a fire wall you can put red color make it red so you can with similar textures just like changing the color you can have uh, you can achieve different uh, effects um, also a, a new thing that's called particle uh, these, these are things that you need to use for example in the adventure game there are fires coming out uh, similarly, in some games, when uh, people or your player collide with en enemies, you might might want to you know uh, create different uh, particle system or different effects. You can use uh, you can create using particle system. Um, you can change various properties of these particles. I'll simply show you how to create these particles and how to use it. For example, in this same game sample, I'll just create a new file. Uh, the, one of them is this. Uh, okay, I need to use resources particle particle system. And you have different things that you need to choose. You can choose uh, uh, fire, star, smoke, or whatever effects you want. I'll choose fire, and it asks me the location. I give the location, and this is a particle that I have. And there are various properties that you can change to make it look like what what is the effect you want for example here the birth rate is 455 which i think is probably too much i let let me change it to 40 and you can instantly change it here in the editor to see how it looks let me make it a little bit more so depending on uh, what your what is the kind of effect you want you can play along with these values for example lifespan let's say this is 2.5 i want to increase the lifespan so let's say five. Get different effects. Similarly, you can apply different colors. The start color and the end color. You can just choose a color and drag, and it will start from a color and end in a color. So all these things you can change, and you can create a particle system easily. Later, I'll show you another demo where I've used a particle system uh, for my game. Uh, these are about uh, particle systems and a lot of time like maximum amount of time after you create your sprite kit node you need to apply some actions to them or you need to animate them somehow you can do normal uh, you know actions like rotate scale fade move all these things you can do uh, to run an uh, SK action, there is this method run action, and you just do it on a node, and uh, especially sprite node, and it will just run that action. Uh, you can run, or basically, you can repeat actions. Repeat actions you use normally when you want to uh, spawn certain objects at periodic, you know, interval. For example, for the zombie con guy uh, game that I saw, um, sword. Um, there are the cats spawn at regular intervals. That's where I can um, use the repeat action. Uh, sequence is where you can sequence or chain um, a series of actions, and uh, these actions take place one after another. You can group them also together so that they will run in parallel. So, depending on what you need, uh, you need to do sequence or group. Or you can combine them together also. You know, this is, you can sequence and you can kind of group them together also. Uh, there is a, another action which is called wait for duration. If at certain scenario you want to wait for certain seconds before your next action happens, uh, then you can use this wait for duration. The thing that I use in my uh, game, the zombie, if I uh, saw the game again, uh, let me pull the game back again. run and show you
if you notice the zombie is not moving just the straight line there is sequence of textures i'm using it's like two three texture i'm using and that gives you this feeling of the zombies walking rather than moving in a straight line and you can use this animate with textures and you can specify the time frame and you can use different textures to give this walking or jumping kind of feeling uh, there are some special actions where you can remove uh, these uh, nodes from your scenes let's say uh, in certain games you have a spaceship that flies off your screen and once the spaceship flies off you probably want to remove it from the scene and there is this remove from parent uh, method that you can use uh, to remove the uh, remove the action Uh, you can use SK action also to play sounds uh, along with your uh, other actions. Okay, let's see another demo. So in this game, um, I have not used any images. All uh, assets are basically ASCII characters. So this is also in a way to Xcode that I'm using. Because Swift changes quite uh, frequently uh, and it's not really stable. The the API changed a little bit depending on the particular version of Xcode. Hopefully this works. It was definitely working. Tool chain. Let me close the stuff. I think the method signature has changed. Let's see. Anyway, let's see if I can run this uh, towards the end. 
for some errors. Uh, the third thing is uh, physics in Sprite Kit. You can apply physics to any SK node, and it will uh, physics of a particular shape, and it will animate accordingly. It will behave accordingly in your physics world. Um, I'll show you an example. So over here I have uh, two physics objects. One is a square and another is a circle. And there's this gravity thing. If you if I put minus 9.8 after some time, it will drop to the bottom. And if I change the property to 9.8 we go to top. Similarly, there is another thing called bound. Uh, if I remove the rectangle of this particular uh, scene in which these objects are, or SK nodes are, they will just fly off the screen. I'm not sure if you have played this game earlier, which is called uh, Gravity Guy, which basically runs, and at a certain point of time, the gravity changes. You need to flip the guy upside down in order to you know, uh, move uh, ahead. I'll show you another game, which is this, called Cat Nap. So basically the objective is I want to drop this cat in this plate and I need to remove these uh, blocks one by one. For example, if I remove this one, the cat falls off the thing. But if I remove one by one, so you can think, think about different ideas on how you want to use these uh, uh, physics bodies. And um, as I mentioned, you have different uh, safes that you can create. You can create your own custom safe. And uh, you can apply it to different nodes. And whenever you do an animation or do an uh, action, it will automatically work for you. Uh, another thing is collision detection. You know, in games, you need to detect the collision between your players and obstacles, players and enemies. And if you want to have some points, if you want to co collect coins and all these things, you need to detect uh, collisions between these things. And because all of these are frames and uh, basically nodes with certain frames, you can use this method called uh, CG rect intersects. It checks if uh, there is an intersection happening between two frames. And if it happens, then uh, you need to do certain things. Again, on the first game, when the zombie hits with the cat lady, it loses life. When it <coughs> hits with the cat, the cat kind of follows the zombie. And there are some new things with the uh, new sprite kit. Uh, you have uh, uh, inverse uh, kinematics, where you can use uh, it uh, to build robotics games, for example. You can uh, apply different kinematics to different nodes. You have light nodes. You have different kind of shadow effects. So all these things are there in uh, the new sprite kit. Uh, you can start with these four videos actually. A lot of things that I talked about uh, today is from the first video, introduction to the sprite kit. Uh, but what's new in sprite kit gives you about, uh, you know, talks uh, about the new things that's up, uh, that are there. And best practices for building sprite kit games talks more about performance and other things. You can buy this book. Uh, if you are planning to buy, then uh, definitely ping me uh, because I probably can get some discount for you. Um, I would suggest buying just the PDF books unless you really like to read, you know, read the printed version. 
um, and this this uh, the book from where the zombie conga games come in and then the cat nap and a few other games that are there you will build five different games while going through the tutorials of this uh, book okay that's it thank you any questions Yeah, you can have any set. You can, you can create your custom sets also. You can have like holes. Hmm? Holes? Like? Yeah, but then shape can be like a hole in it, like a donut. Like um, I think for donut, uh, you need to use scene kit because that's a 3D shape. It's not really a 2D shape. Um, I think for that, you probably need to use scene kit. I'm not sure if you can do it using just sprite kit. Or you might be able to do it using physics body and uh, sprite mode. I'll tell you, for new games, right, uh, it dep all depends on how you want to let user interact with your games. Um, there's one time, have you watched this game called um, uh, Train Your Dragon, or this movie actually. Um, so when the movie was first released, we were actually building a game for them. Uh, it's more like a uh, demo game or MVP game, if you say. So there's a dragon, you basically rub the dragon, and the dragon gets uh, hot. And you can see the baby dragon breathing inside a um, hot egg. There's an X-ray uh, button. You tap on the X-ray button. You can see the baby dragon breathing. And if uh, it becomes too hot, the dragon gets angry, and your phone will start shaking. And you can use your microphone to kind of cool the dragon or blow air, cool the egg. So you can touch is one thing. Uh, you can use touch and swipe and all those things. But you can also use this uh, other interactions like microphone or other input methods like uh, microphone or even different gestures, uh, shakes, yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure if the second speaker is here. Is it? It's not here. He said I'm on my way, so we'll just wait for him and uh, you can enjoy the food until then, if the food is there, yeah. I think there are four more boxes there. You can just enjoy the food by then and you know, talk with each other. And